Hi everyone and welcome to my blog 3 coaching philosophy. It is safe to say that my coaching philosophy has evolved from my time at university to present day and the following findings best fit my current view and approach. Careless and Douglas 2011 clearly articulating one's philosophy provides direction and focus in relation to how one goes about doing the job of coaching. Martin's 2014 mentions coaches are influential in creating positive and achievement oriented sport environments and the development of a sound philosophy is a key to coaching success. <coughs> At the start of my career, I took an authoritarian style where I valued discipline in rigid schedules due to its advantages. However, the environment was not successful, nor was the relationship. This led me to adapting a more humanistic approach and a different coaching style. The humanistic approach can be defined as a person-centered ideology that encourages and supports athletes as they develop into authentic and valued adults. Collins et al. 2011 mentions, a coach consistently analyzes the behavioral response of the athlete, which allows the coach to make appropriate variable changes to enable the athlete to achieve the desired goal, thereby including the athlete in the decision-making, in addition to having ability to talk about life and general matters was particularly important if players were experiencing personal issues that required consultation and direction. My coaching style is therefore cooperative in nature, which offers leadership while encouraging performance and decision making. This style is a balance between autocratic and democratic, and I often attempt to vary my style when recognizing the demand of the situation. For larger groups, children, or in unsafe situations, my style would be more autocratic. Other times, I'd like to allow the performance to unfold and take a more questioning approach. This I deem as effective and it has proven successful thus far. Next are my beliefs that are defined as trust or confidence in something from my experience. My first belief is that an environment must be positive and demanding. Environments must be structured to facilitate learning and further development progressions must be introduced to reinforce learning. Second is athletic development. Assisting players reach their individual goals and performance, outcomes or finding errors to improve in the player's game are so far more important than winning. And lastly, personal development. Coaching effectiveness at all levels is centered on developing athletes' competence, competence, connection and character. The four features that reflect personal and professional skills of the athlete. Coaching is all about connecting with your athlete. Coaches must develop an awareness of each player's personal context to create an environment in which the player or players are comfortable and are able to reach their potential. In addition, when athletes' perceptions surpass their specified preferences with regards to training, positive feedback, and social support, the more satisfied the athletes are. The values I have all are the principles that are important in life. Honesty for me is the backbone for every successful relationship. Relationships between athlete and coach are uniquely interconnected and interpersonal. The coach's ability to relate to the athlete establishes a closeness with mutual respect and trust. Discipline falls within the realm of success, and the very nature of this environment establishes the investment of the athlete and ensures that he or she maintains a principled life. If the athlete veers off path, it is expected that the athlete recognizes it upon reflection and restores his or her status by correcting the behavior. Commitment and work ethic. In the hope of motivating athletes, I would like my values and expectations to stimulate their own intrinsic values. I want them to feel positively challenged so that they want to push themselves and achieve their goals. Good coaches should consider the athlete, the external measures, and the aim of the program when creating a training regime. To establish buy-in from athletes, they must believe in what you do. An enormous part of this belief is seeing the value. Coupled with the belief of the athlete, athletic program and personal growth, coaches empower athletes when they share knowledge of the movement as well as its benefits. Functional movement patterns are important. Dear Guerin et al. 2019 mentions, at the start of a training regime, novice athlete will learn the correct movement patterns related to strength exercises. This stage is imperative to establish the foundation of a physical attribute for long-term success. 
It ensures that athletes learn the objective of strength training and the correct lifting technique. This involves the coordination of stabilizers, synergies, and antagonist muscles. Once the foundation of the movement is mastered, athletes may then apply the same coordination to other movements at varying velocities. Endurance. Optimal cardiovascular endurance is one of the key fitness components in the comprehensive training program. The purpose of muscular endurance is to improve performance in your sport, exercise, and everyday life. To sustain a high intensity exercise, we must elicit the help of anaerobic energy systems to fuel this activity. Strength, therefore, is important. Wilson et al. 2005 support the idea that strength training can improve cardiovascular and cardiorespiratory capacity for short term periods as well as long term periods. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.